Do you find me intense? <laughs> because I just come back from the toilet and I'm stuck. No, oh, I'm stuck on my nose ring. Help. Oh. <laughs> oh. God, that was a terrifying moment. I really had to cut away my face. Anyway, oxygen's coming in a little bit. Welcome to our day. You just had someone come knock on the door. And it was weird. Very, very weird. Am I telling them? Yeah, because you answered the door. Okay. Well, I thought it was going to be the oxygen dude. And I was just like, really? That was like, you're supposed to be here in like two hours or whatever. And it's not even been like half an hour. But anywho, um, I opened the door and there was this woman there and she was just like, is it you that's registered to stay forward because we've got a sign on our door that says, um, please be patient because a disabled person lives here. Um, and I was like, no, it's my wife actually. And she was just like, ah, oh, I'm looking for a man. And I was just like, okay. And she was like, I need a man that's registered disabled. Do you know if there are any around here? And I'm just like, no. And I was just thinking to myself, even if I did, I wouldn't tell you because you didn't give me any clue of who you are, what you want this person for. I'm not about to, I'm not about to send this random person around to someone who like <laughs> could be vulnerable. Not gonna happen. How bizarre. It was, yeah, it was really odd. Very, very strange. Hmm. So, I said in yesterday's vlog that we wanted, which I'm going to link at the end of the uh, this vlog, like I do on all of our vlogs, <coughs> we're going to try some science experiments. <coughs> Those of you who have been following for a little while, if I can find it, I'll iCard it. We tried to turn Coke clear. Thanks, Alba. With activated charcoal because apparently that's supposed to work well uh, thanks Alba um, all it did was grow mold so I found another one that it's supposed to turn it not clear but more of a pale sort of color that when you then pour it, it kind of has the thanks Alba you're trying to make them yawn <laughs> um, so yeah, it's basically kind of like water it down and kind of make it a little bit see-through-ish. I don't know. So we're going to go and try it now. Do you find me intense? <laughs> Can I have a kiss? Thank you. Did it say on the thing how long it takes to do it? It should happen pretty instant. Oh, okay. Like, well, like a few minutes. Hold the cup. No. Oh, 
shit. Didn't think about that, did I? You're lucky. Looks like ice cream. Ew. Right, let's wait for that phone to, uh... Did you want to take this over? Give him a better view, innit? Well, uh, it's been just over an hour, and... What do you know? Another experiment so far that the internet has failed with. We are proving all these things wrong, people. So whilst that one still sits there and probably grows a bit more, like, mould like last time, I'll just, uh, move all this. I have another experiment that we're going to try. And it consists of an egg and white vinegar. And what it's meant to do is you leave it overnight and it's supposed to, like, get rid of the egg shell but leave the membrane. So it's supposed to make it go clear and strengthen the membrane and see you'll be able to see the raw egg inside and it's, like, kind of bouncy. So, um... Yeah, please. Let's see if this one's an epic fail as well. Thirsty. Not for vinegar. Do you know how hard it was, people, as well, to find white bloody vinegar? It was horrific. We just couldn't find it anywhere, could we? No. Oh, just jetted some out. So, let's see how this one goes. Well, on the video that I watched, it did go bubbly, so maybe this is the start of a good sign. But I don't know. We shall watch this space. We have some caramelization. Fingers crossed it's actually working then. Shiny oxygen bottles. You're licking the bottle, baby girl. Yeah, now I liked it. And you've got a granddad aerial. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, new um, toppers on the bottles. You said that normally they've got like four different types of the big ones. Like three different types of this size and like then all the little ones but they're being the trial for just having these which is a lot easier because it, you just literally turn this and it's on whereas before you had to turn a dial that was on the side to unlock it so that it would come out um yeah it's a lot easier awesome we got four of those and we got the big one and we've got the baggie that actually fits these in it oh. we got a floater that sounds disgusting. But at least it's doing something. I have also now created... <coughs> thanks, Dixie. Created your child's name written in their handwriting. Engraved on the wood with a keychain and a tassel. They're for sale on my Facebook page. Walking on rainbows. Egg update. It looks like it's like swelled up to begin with and uh, it looks like it's bleeding so it's either the writing on the egg coming off from when they label it or it's the actual eggshell colouring coming off But it was doing all flippity flip circles. Spinning and spinning. It's kind of still moving now. Yeah, it's just slow. Enough. Whereas this, the bit that was curdling. Oh, I think it might actually. Or is that a shadow? Hang on. No, that's a shadow. So, uh, yeah, 
this little thing that's supposed to curdle, the curdling has kind of stopped. We shall keep it here and hope though. But at least this one's doing something. One little fur baby has my teapot. And the other one is oh, she's looking at me. You're talking about me now. And she's got that one. We've got to be careful though, because Alba can't have this one because it's had chicken in. Look how much they love it. Oh, crusty bits. Or at least not until Pickle's got everything Yeah. Oh. There is it doing it moving. It's good to work with. Go back with your pot. You've got tomato on your head. And it goes again. Oh. What? It floated. It's got a bit poking out the top of the wall. There's some of that red bit on there, there. Yeah. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> you can see a bit of a red thing. I don't know if you'll be able to see what it is. It's on the top. It's sat on the top of the actual egg. I think it's literally the colour of the egg coming off. Oh. Ew, that's fine. Yeah, because the actual egg is getting yeah, lighter. Really. It's very cool. This would be so cool if it works. He lifted his head, but it was smushed up against that little bit of mud, but look at him. His little leg touching the door. He's all spread out. Cutie. wonder if he'll rest his head back again. It's because I asked Soph to pause the TV. He, then he looked up then. But his eyes are closing. I'm getting sleepy. Very sleepy. Come on. Lower. He's so freaking cute. Earlier on he was in his tube, led down. His head was poking out one end and his feet was poking out the other. Considering he's a dwarf rabbit, he's bloody long. I can't even begin to imagine having a full-size rabbit. I don't think he's going to rest it for you. His eye's getting smaller though. Oh, it's her getting lower. Uh oh. I think he jolted himself awake. And now you can't even see his eye at all because of a bloody pole. So, update on the milk and coke. The initial bit of curd, curd, curdling has disappeared. And now it just looked like 
a crap cup of tea. The egg, on the other hand, be gentle, please, Alba. He will hit you and he will bite you if you are not gentle. Calm your bum down. So, yeah, the egg, on the other hand. Oi! Enough now. More bleeding's gone on. And the egg is actually very light. I mean, it says like 24 hours and it should be clear. And I think it's only been five hours currently. So that's not bad after five hours. So we'll see what happens in the morning. So guys, you know this mattress that's been living up the top of the stairs since we got a new one? Well, so and I have just used the stair lift to bring it downstairs. But unfortunately, we live a little high up, quite a few steps. So now I can't do any more with my crawling. I'm delegating to Soph. Are you in here? Just about. We want to get the baby's room sorted, so this is the first thing that's got to go. Oh. It's a bit chilly out here. And it was shit about this situation is, is I couldn't use my oxygen because of it getting caught in everything. Um, if you come out this way, babe, and then push this end up and over. Does that look you can do whatever you want. But yeah, my oxygen would have got all tangled up, so. <laughs> Just stand on it. Just stand on it. We drove it up our garden. <laughs> we drove it up our garden. <laughs> so this is the reason why I can only use that one access. Oh well, they've seen it before. Um, so yeah, which is why it was getting like really stressed when people were parking outside the back gate because there's no way in hell I could get up and down this. And even if I could crawl down it, I still don't have my wheelchair. Just pushing it up and forward, like, towards the seats. Lights out. Should be fine. Don't break the car. Job sorted. So... So she's going to park the car because she's going to take this when she goes volunteering tomorrow. She's going to take it to the dump and the, the blokes at the dump always help us anyway. I I mean, they do everything. <laughs> so, yay! All done. Just realised, I don't think I've shown you our hallway. These are some donkeys that we took. We didn't take. We, we took our nephew, Zach, to the donkey sanctuary. And there's these donkeys that we had to get them and they've always been on our door. Then these are some of the very first stamps I ever collected. And then my very first birthday card from Zach with his first time he's ever wrote his name. And then this is from so from Valentine's last year. And this is the canvas I painted. My best friend may put me that for one of my birthdays. There's my nan and Zach when he was four months old. Some pictures I can't show you because um, they're babies that I've helped. Another piece of art from Jess. Campervan postcard we got sent. Another piece of art I done. Some art that Sophie and I found in the charity shop. 
and we left the glass off so that we can feel all the textures. So for now, when Zach was four months old and we were, well, I was really fit. A painting that I done when I was impatient um, in the mental health unit under section. That's how long ago I did that one. That was a foot I took for a competition. And that's Sophie looking in her mirror. Another painting I done. A crossfit Sophie made. That was sent to Sophie from one of our Spoonie friends. I think that was one of the first paper cuts that Jess done. Yeah. Yep. Um, an envelope that Zach decorated before he could write his name. <laughs> There's our little Dixie when she was four or five months old. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's me and Zach on his third Christmas, I think. Because I've got yeah, oxygen sorry, on that. Yeah, it was the last one. It wasn't this, like the one you saw, it was one before that. Another piece of art from Jess. Alba, first time when she had to wear boots. There's another piece of art from Jess. There's some pictures up there of our baby girls. I'll show you them a bit closer in a second. And this was in a birthday card that six parents gave her, and we really liked it, so we cut this out of the card and we framed it. Oh. And I'll show you the rest when I get on the chair. So, we've also got that, which I believe Jess gave us as well. <laughs> Yeah, a lovely little butterfly, a meteor plaque, this plaque, the plaque that Soph gave me, thanks, um, swiftly going up, I also forgot to show you that it was a wand, but the painters, when we had the bills the first time round, they took the end of the wand off because they wasn't careful with their masking tape and they left it on too long. Dicks. Albert and Dixie in our first home together. Albert was, what, three months there? Yeah, she wasn't very old at all, was she? No. The painting I'd done so when I was impatient in the mental health unit. This is one of my favourites. The ones that are on the wall walls are actually the ones I like the most. This is from our friend Vicky and her son Oscar. They've now got another little boy called Louis. She coloured it in. The orange and yellow is obviously because Sophie and I's favourite colours. And she coloured, I think it's a robin, in purple. Yeah, Different shades of purple in memory of our friend Hayley who had cystic fibrosis that sadly passed following rejection of a double lung transplant. Are you going to do them every day? Pretty much one. Only because there's a lot of things. That is not that much, Mum. Dixie, when she had her puppies and they were like a day old. Another picture from Jess. I'm not showing her like the baby ones and... Yeah, that's not... There's Dixie when she was two. Look, that's like... Alba last year. <laughs> First time we were on the beach, me in my wheelchair and Albert at all. That was sent from a friend in New Zealand. That's from Jess. That's from a pen pal. Alba with her ears. I got this certificate when I was part of St. John when I helped save a man's life um, doing CPR. The girl's footprint, and a card to me and Safe's thumbprint. <clears throat> a hand painted picture from a friend in New Zealand. There's Hayley, that was not long after she went back to the heart and lung transplant hospital when the rejection started. A picture I drew and so really likes it. And painted obviously. These are more pictures, I can't really see it, but it's Dixie with her potato. There's the girl sat side by side. A really cute quote. 
another one with the girls side by side. Another painting I done. There's a huge story behind this. Once I painted it, and one similar, a friend that used to be ours copied it and tried claiming it as their own. And when I bought her up on it, she got all offensive and started accusing us of stuff and then suddenly blocked us as friends. So I think she knows she was wrong. That's a hand drawing of a wabbit from our friend in Australia. More of the girls. Another picture from a friend in a group that we used to be part of where we send mail to each other. Postcodes and drawings from friends in New Zealand and Australia. A multitude of pictures because we know we'll run out of space one day. One of my first watercolour paintings. These are all pictures of our very first holiday together. Um, a canvas which we left the glass off again because it's all textured and we wanted to feel it and that's from a friend in New Zealand. This empty gap here once belonged another collage picture when Sophie and I last... No, it wasn't doing the mattress. You tried tucking to toilet roll at me. Did I? Yeah, and you knocked it flying. It's all, it's all intact. You just keep getting set up. Yeah. Another painting I'd done when I was in... Impatient. This was at the same time as that one. What colour paintings I'd done? If anybody knows St John Ambulance, when you, like, the first little section of their group is something called Badgers and I completed absolutely everything and that was in October 2000 19 years ago people and then there's more collages there Ta -da! and we're gonna leave it there so we're gonna just gonna say bye to Soph tonight because I'm currently floating halfway up the stairs so thanks for coming on our day guys we'll see you tomorrow Good night! Tuesday, March 12th. A terrible sin. Have mercy on me, O oh God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my trans transgressions. Complaining as natural as breathing, whether it's about traffic, the weather, or the mess someone left in the microwave. But did you know that complaining is a terrible sin in God's eyes? In Numbers 11, the Israelites did a lot of complaining. They grumbled about their hardship, lamented, is that that? I don't know. About the great food they'd had at no cost in Egypt and wailed for meat. Their grousing sparked the Lord's anger. In verse 1, he literally sent fire into the outskirts of the camp, bringing Moses to near despair over the burdens and people. <clears throat> what makes complaining so bad? It's mistrust in action. When the Israelites complained, they were telling lies about God's character. He hasn't and won't provide what we need. And they implied that Egyptian slavery was preferably to God's freedom. Complaining ignores everything God has done and says. God, since you didn't go the way I wanted, you aren't really trustworthy, are you? Yikes. The Israelites needed the repented heart, repentant heart shown in Psalm 51 to confess their sin and reaffirm God's unfailing love toward them. We too should represent when we repent when we complain. And God is faithful and just to give for of and just to forgive us. Better yet, let's make a habit of giving thanks instead of complaints. Father, help me to see all the blessings you give every day.